Hi, I'm Anthony Chapman and I'm a tutor here at Point Break Music School. I've got over 20 years industry experience as a producer, engineer, mixer and composer, working with the likes of Franz Ferdinand and Claxons. And you're watching Nine Lives of Ableton. If you're new to making electronic music, these videos should give you an overview of how to get started using Live and an idea of what it's capable of. If you're experienced with other platforms but new to Live, you'll probably find these videos really useful as well. So, some of the sounds in this project are audio loops that I've dragged and dropped straight into the session view window. Now, Live usually does a very good job of automatically fitting imported audio into the project. Now, if I uh, preview this loop in my library here, you can hear that's a lot slower than the project, which is this tempo. But if I preview it while uh, the project is playing, we hear it in tempo. And if I click and drag it, it creates a new track with that loop as a clip, and I can play it. So there you can see, it's really easy to bring loops in, and this works for pretty much any kind of audio. So I've got the uh, sample editor for this clip visible, and if we look at these uh, small gray triangles above the sample, these are transient markers, and a transient is a very, very fast change in volume. So when we're talking about drums and drum loops, almost always it's going to be like the beginning of a drum hit, a kick drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat, something like that. And Live has detected these, and this is how Live changes the tempo automatically of the audio so that it fits with everything else in the project. Now, these yellow ones are warp markers, and if I click and drag that, you see that concertina's down. It's basically shrinking. And if I go the other way, it stretches it. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is... Uh, if I double click on the transient markers, they turn into warp markers. Alternatively, I can just make a selection and right click and go insert warp markers. So now every one of the transients in that loop has a warp marker on it. And what that means is I can change the way this loop plays. I can change where all these hits come by sh shrinking or stretching them. Okay, so let's just hear this loop on its own. And I'm just going to experiment and try moving some things around. Okay. So that's kind of uh, transformed the way that the loop plays. Now that I've done this, what I can do is freeze and flatten the track. And what that basically means is it creates a new version of the clip with all of my edits in place. So I'm going to right click here and go freeze track. Yes, I want to stop audio. It freezes it. And now I'm going to go flatten. So flatten makes a new audio file which has all of those edits in it. So if I play it... Okay, so now I want to take this even further. I'm going to right click on that clip and I'm going to choose Slice to New MIDI Track. And you see this dialog comes up and it's telling me it's going to create one slice for every transient that's detected in the loop. And what's going to happen now is it's going to create a new track with a drum rack device where each pad of the drum rack contains one of these slices. And then it's all also going to create a MIDI clip, which plays the uh, the loop as it is here. If that sounds a little bit confusing, let's just demonstrate. So I'll click OK. And you see it's created the drum rack there, and it's made this new track here. OK, so I'm going to stop that one and start this. Double click on the clip, and we can see the MIDI that it's playing. Okay, now just let me crop this. And 
Now I'm just going to manipulate this even further. Each one of these MIDI notes is playing a bit of that beat. So let's just play with this. So there we go, I've managed to completely transform that from what the beat originally was. And remember, if we listen back to the original one, and we've gone from that to, and all in the matter of a few clicks. So we've seen how Live's audio warping features can help you creatively manipulate audio. In the next video, we're going to explore some of Live 9's new features for converting audio to MIDI. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response, and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it, and then pushes record on the screen capturing software, and it evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on a course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.